again, Kiana, and welcome to another edition of Conversations in Faith. I'm Malika Ramsey. Thank you so very much for joining us this week. Um, of course, we took a look, a little break. So uh, two Saturdays ago, you actually got a rebroadcast of Conversations in State, but we're back with a fresh, fresh edition this week. And it's my pleasure to welcome to this program for the first time, the Director of Culture, Miss Tamika Bolson. Of course, I always remind you that this program focuses on uh, the positives, the developments of all of those departments that uh, fall within the uh, Ministry of the Presidency, not necessarily physically there, but uh, they function around that office. Uh, Tamika, welcome to Conversations in State. Thank you. All right, it's good to have you. And um, because she's the Director of um, Culture, as I said, we're in a sense still coming fresh off of Mastermind. So even before we talk about culture specifically and what your department is doing and so on, let's talk about Mastermind, the successes, the failures, what you can learn from, you know, how, how satisfied is the department with Mastermind 2018? Well, I can tell you that the department is very satisfied um, mm -hmm. because most of us in the, the T the leading team, the administration for Mashamani, were new, oh. and um, it like it's like we started out on a slate, and we didn't know what the end result would be, mm. but we we were working really hard to ensure that we had a good end product, and so um, the product, the public's response to the end product is very encouraging, and we're really proud of our achievements. Mm -hmm. Especially when it came to um, the the parade and to our song competitions, our music competitions, mm -hmm. um, the kind of responses we got from the public was really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I know you were telling me earlier that uh, the prize giving ceremony was held last evening. I, uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> well, the prize giving ceremony um, was was. You, as usual, a prize giving ceremony where we gave all the winners mm -hmm. from all the categories um, their awards. Mm -hmm. We also launched March 2019. So ah. a theme has been unveiled and will be circulated in the media soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, that signals our preparations for 2019 has begun mm -hmm. um, because we want to ensure that we take the quality of MASH to another level. Mm -hmm. And so we're working from early now to cross our T's, dot our I's, mm -hmm. and to ensure that we have all that we should have in place, that people won't have any reason to be uncomfortable or to complain about any aspect, and we want maximum participation from everyone in Ghana. And to do so, we need to maxim provide maximum opportunities for people to be able to participate. All right, great. I'm sure we're going to have uh, many more opportunities to talk with Ms. Boston about uh, Mashamani um, uh, 2019 and, and, and going forward as, yes. as you prepare. So but we're not going to jump the gun too much for now. Let's talk about culture, though, what you're really here to talk about. Uh, first off, so that, you know, we can get an understanding about what the department is doing. What really is culture? What does it mean for your department? Culture is actually a product of the people, you know, mm -hmm. the beliefs, the customs, the practices, those traditions that people hold dear, mm -hmm. um, that is defined, culture is defined by the people mm -hmm. and by what they would have done historically, mm -hmm. right, over a prolonged period of time, that which is accepted as norm or, or a practice within a particular sphere or area. Mm -hmm. How important it is for us to preserve culture? Well, culture goes hand in hand with identity mm -hmm. right C culture helps us define who we are um, being Guyanese there's a certain culture attached to you as a person you you do things in a certain manner you believe in certain things you um, uphold certain beliefs rather that is now part that's part of your identity who you are so when you go to another country um, mm -hmm. That's what causes you to stand out from another person within that sphere. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that you talked about another country because the the next question would be, is there a need, especially where we're part of CARICOM, Yan is a part yeah. of CAR CARICOM, and we have so many brothers and sisters in terms of states. Um, is there a need to promote our own culture outside of Guyana? Yes, because 
um, we want to be appreciated by the rest of the world mm. for our uniqueness and for the things that we do. And in order for people to gain understanding and to have some appreciation, we need to market our culture and um, promote it as much as possible so people understand, all right, this is cool, this mm -hmm. is what Guyanese do, that's a Guyanese thing, and they respect you for that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Jamaica has done well in advancing their culture in, in the region and it, across the world. I mean, you have the yes. Japanese <laughs> adopting Jamaican culture, and that's because they have been very good ambassadors taking their culture abroad. And so for me, to, in order to preserve our, to preserve our Guyanese identity, we need to promote it. As well, it helps with building self-esteem within the population because when we interact with all the Caribbean people, if we don't have that pride, that respect from the rest of the world, we tend, can tend to feel shy Mm -hmm. and feel that what we have is substandard or has no value. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. promoting the culture gives the population that assurance, look, this is, this is something wonderful and this is something that you can gain respect for. Is it um, high in terms of promoting it outside of Guyana, of course, is it high on your agenda at the department? And, you know, what are some of the possible challenge, challenges you may have to battle in order oh. to achieve that? Okay, it's high on the agenda because... Um, you find that there are opportunities for our local artists, especially, mm -hmm. and, and um, for areas in the creative industries. Uh, Carifesto, I think for me, Carifesto last year opened my eyes to a number of things. For one, when you go out there, the response of the people mm -hmm. gives you that assurance that what you're doing is of the highest standard and quality based on the respect they give you. So we measure ourselves, but it's good when we get a nod okay. from somebody who's independent and outside. Secondly, because of how markets are structured, the music industry, for example, would like to be able to sell their music universally. In order to do that, you need to be able to have give them exposure to other markets, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's, it's very important to be able to have access abroad. The challenge comes with finances. Ah, yes. The artists always, well, most of them can't afford to be able to travel a lot to do concerts and promote their music. So they're always seeking funding for craft and the visual arts. There are significant markets in the, the diaspora but getting their products to the diaspora is also a challenge, financial challenge. Obviously, the department would not be able to cover every, every artist, um, regardless of what your artist, right? craft, music, yeah. or whatever. But is there any specific part of a budget that is given to your department annually that, in, could in some cases, assist, especially our um, musicians, especially musicians? Um, um, no, there's no specific area that's dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. um, if the government sees it fit that they'd like Guyanese to participate, then plans are made for okay. Guyanese to participate in international forums. We, we, go, we tend to go to Carifesta as often as, as it has been held. Mm -hmm. And you, as you know, Carifesta started in Guyana. Mm -hmm. And we see that as a very important platform for artists and artists. Mm -hmm. And so we always endeavor as much as possible to take um, artists and artists to expose them. Um, last year at Carifesta, a number of talent scouts, as they would call them, mm -hmm. were present in Barbados looking for talent. And some of our, our, our delegation were engaged um, in conversations with, with, ta with these talent scouts who thought they had great potential, mm -hmm. right? And for us, that was a real good win and it was really encouraging. Apart from that, sometimes from time to time, we have countries would ask for performance and sometimes they pay everything, including your fare and ticket. All we need to do is identify mm -hmm. someone right. to go. And we certainly do take up those opportunities. How big of a burden is the issue of copyright laws in Guyana? On, on, on that, on challenging these artists? On a scale of 1 to 10, I would say 10. 
because mm. the artists don't get anything from what is being pirated and sold out there. And um, we have a culture where we feel that we must access things free. free. Mm -hmm. We don't think about the labor that's put into what is produced, the cost to the individual to produce what is being produced. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of our artists are left wanting, they pr they're producing great music, but the consumption of that music is where um, they're suffering. Okay, viewers, if you're now tuning in, of course, today's uh, conversation on Conversations in State is with the Director of Culture, Mr. Mika Boson, and of course, we're talking culture. Even before we talk about some of the activities the Department of Culture uh, is involved in, in terms of protecting and promoting our culture and so on at this time, let's talk about, uh, I like to call it crossover, various crossovers. It is now uh, culture, social cohesion, and youth. Maybe not in that order necessarily. Sport. But and sport, of mm -hmm. course. How is that going to, especially, I, I'd like to start with social cohesion first. Yeah. How is that going to strengthen the operations of the Department of Culture, bringing it to our people? Well, um, culture, I believe, is a platform on which social cohesion can be achieved. Okay. Because for me, social cohesion is the outcome of a process, right? Um, culture provides that platform because of it, it can provide tolerance and understanding through advocacy of um, different cultures, um, through different forums that we provide. And for me, it's very important for us as policymakers to see the opportunities that are there in the merger of the two um, areas and to utilize those opportunities at maximum so that at the end of the day, we have our end goal, mm -hmm. end goal, which is social cohesion, mm -hmm. right? And, and unity. And course. unity, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, what about the crossover with youth and sport? Well, youth and sport are, have always been good partners with culture. Youth, particularly because um, if you want any, any tradition or any culture to last or to sustain, you have to make youths stakeholders in the process. And um, a lot of our youths find areas within culture where um, they can relax, where they can, um, they can ease their stress, where they can find therapy, mm -hmm. right? Like dance, music, drama. Um, that's where they, be, they can become um, who they want to be, so to speak. And so they tend to reach out. A lot of our, our um, practice, practitioners in the field right now mm -hmm. are young people, mm -hmm. right? Youth um, make up a large percentage of our schools. Uh, we have the music school, dance school, drama school, and even the Borough School of Art, right? And so um, we can't function outside of understanding the needs of youth, mm -hmm. so to speak. With sport now, we find great partnerships, especially in, in, in areas where there are activities to commemorate um, national events. For example, at emancipation, sometimes there, there is a football that is held for emancipation. It might be soccer, there might be cricket, or some other sport. And so there are partnerships. They're celebrating culture. Mm -hmm. With a sport activity. A sport activity. Okay. Right. Okay. So, yes, there is that crossover <laughs> that uh, I was talking about. I won't get, in to get into some of the, the physical aspects of culture. First off, sometimes when we think about culture, heritage comes to mind, and we think about our monuments and so on, um, you know, significant statues and so on around our country. How big of a role is it for culture to help to preserve and upkeep those monuments? Well, I think that's the that's one of the roles of culture, mm. to preserve our monuments and sites because they are of sig historical significance to our culture, to our heritage, mm -hmm. right? Um, they even offer some insight in terms of why 
again is the way it, it is. is. Yeah. So it's very important that we preserve that. We have the National Trust of Ghana, mm -hmm. which has a responsibility for preserving monuments and sites. And they have been working to document and to preserve as much as they can. Um, the challenge comes with private residences no. because um, some of our dwelling structures, houses, mm -hmm. are considered monuments for their historical value. Really? So, yes. So you'd find, like, for instance, the colonial house mm. is also considered mm -hmm. a historical monument because it represents a particular period, a particular era, and a particular lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Right? And so the challenge is some of those buildings are privately owned. And you'd like to keep them in the, the yeah. style and the, 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 the keep the artwork. But you can't but really tell a, a family. No, we don't have any fun funding to <laughs> even support the maintenance of the building. So sometimes people, you know, ignore or cry or please. And they just pull the buildings down without... Um, any consideration, but in the rest of the Caribbean, especially in um, Mexico and Puerto Rico and so on, there's a great love for wooden ar architecture, mm -hmm. right? I've had, um, I've been in courses and programs where professors talk, spoke with a kind of a romantic lust mm. about wooden architecture, <laughs> right? And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just thought, well, I wish if can is can yeah, speak we this so way, touch. can be so passionate mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. colonial architecture, or any other um, aspect of our built heritage, for example, mm -hmm. you know. You're talking about protecting, you know, and trying to preserve and, and having this, this love and being involved with it. And, and something also came to mind, even though you did speak extensively about artists um, a little early on, a, a moment or two ago, it, it brought to mind Calypso, and we were even talking about the reigning Calypso monarch, of course, who is a female again, congratulations to her. And one of the things that would have came to mind is how many people are now in tune to, especially young people, in, interested in Calypso, and is it an art, I, I, I don't want to say dying art, but is it an art that needs some amount of resuscitating? Okay, yes, well, what I can say is that there a few, well, a number of producers who are working with young people mm -hmm. and bringing them into the sector. Um, and there, we have some really good talent coming up. We had Tashana Court last year. You have Javinsky this year. And you have so many other youngsters with really um, good voices mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the genre of music. The challenge is, however, to get the music to move away from um, some of the themes that they confine themselves to, like politics. Okay. So when they sing that song for the competition, when that's done, there's not much else you, you can, can do, do with, with the music, as opposed to sing songs that can be universal and can be taken you know, but anywhere you can, you can put away from the art. If you, if you do that, would that be somewhat moving away from the no, art? No, the art form was never meant to just be common, common political and, 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 and commentary. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think people misinterpret that and think that it's only it confined has. to that. Mm -hmm. But you can sing about other things, right? Um, you can sing about things that affect well, social the life. I didn't sing about politics, right? Really. Yeah. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, the thing is, you have to be creative, mm -hmm. and you have to have appeal in what you sing. If you, there's no appeal, then, you know. Um, the other challenge is that most, most times the only opportunity that our Calypsonians have is at MASH. And so we need to now pr provide other opportunities for them to be able to produce music and perform. Mm -hmm. And the department was... Well, we'd like to have to give them more opportunities, if finances would permit, to pro produce music for another event that's outside of Mash Money, not a one or two events, that they can build up their all their the quality of the music that they have and the quantity of the music that they have. So, after 
a while, we'd be able to have national awards mm -hmm. for the number of music, album of the year, mm -hmm. you know, song of the year. We can have those awards given because, you know, people are producing the kind of music that you can say, yes, this is great. It, in, in talking about that too, I saw uh, in some sections of our society, people got really excited with the steel pan players, the pan music yes, this year. Would yes. you like to talk about that a bit? Okay, well, steel pan, for me, this year a lot of people were, uh, mm -hmm. were seeing it for the first time, but it has been going on like that. It has been that way for a while. This, there was, there's always fierce competition between the bands and between the schools. And I would really, it was, it's my hope that people can choose a band and rally around that band, support mm -hmm. their band as much as possible, and encourage them. Because Steel Pan is another art form that's coming back, and we don't ever want to lose it. I think people really enjoyed the sideshow, the entertainment. Yes, the dancing. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. It wasn't just standing there and playing. Playing, and right. Yes, and th that, that created a buzz. And, um, for the players, it's really exciting to have the crowd going wild while yes. you play. It puts them on another level. I, I think they really enjoy that. So they need to keep that audience. Um, we as the public need to continue to follow them and support them as much as possible, encourage them, and create more opportunities too for them to be able to play, mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't, we need to in, have more ceremonies where steel pan is a part of that mm -hmm. ceremony naturally. We think of steel pan and steel pan is part of our 